Katie. Can I talk to you for a second? Oh, hey, Ashley. It's been a while. It's kind of surprising to hear from you. What's up? No, nothing special. Our kids are not in the same kindergarten class anymore, and they use different school bus, so we don't get a chance to see each other often. I thought we could have some talk. I know. We used to live in the same apartment, and they used to play together. They grow up so fast. It's fun to chit chat once in a while. Yeah, we moved out of that cheap place soon and moved into a fully customized house. We can't rent a room forever, right? I mean, our standard of living has changed. I was worried that we might not get along. Really? We go to the same kindergarten and same elementary school eventually. Nothing will change. What? You've got to be kidding me! We built a fully custom-built house in a very popular and expensive area. Can you stop putting me in the same position with the rest of the people in the world? Oh, and of course you are included in the others. Oh, that place was popular. I didn't know. Oh, you'd better remember that. Oh, by the way, we built a house too. What? When? Where? They have just finished building and we're moving in next week. Where? Which company built it? I'm so curious. Did you say that you were building a house? Yeah. Well, we just happened to build a house. You know, you need luck too. We found a nice place near the station and in the same school district. We had candlelight homes to build it. Really, candlelight? Why didn't you use our company? Oh, that's right. You work for a housing company. Sorry, I forgot about it. We wanted to build a house where we could feel cozy. That's why we chose them. That's terrible. We can build a cozy house too. What? Are you saying we can't? No, no, no. Not like that. My husband's friend works at Candlelight, and we'd been talking about it forever. They've known each other for a long time, so they've started talking about it, and so I'm sorry. Fine. Oh. Hey, do you mind if I come and visit you? I do the same business, so I'd like to learn from them. Yeah, of course. After we move in and get settled, you can come visit me on your day off. Will do. I'll look forward to it. Bye. Okay. See you soon. Hi, Katie. It's been a while. How are you doing? Oh, Ashley. It's Sunday, but you're off today. I heard you guys are busy on the weekends, so I thought it's hard for home builders to take weekends off. Luckily, it's an off season right now. I was able to get a day off today, so I thought I'd spend some time by myself. And then I just came up with the idea in having a barbecue. Wow, that's really nice. Maybe I'll have a barbecue next week too. The kids would love it. It's one of the best parts of moving in from an apartment to a house with a yard. Yes, since it was a sudden day off, I didn't have any plan. Plus, I have an unfortunate news for you. Huh? What is it? Actually, I'm having a barbecue at your place. What? Why? Because you told me to come visit you. On my day off, so I did what I said. I'm a very active person, aren't I? It was a sudden day off, so I came over to your house for a barbecue, but it burned down. I'm sorry you're left with a thirty-year mortgage, but good luck paying it off. Ashley, is that a joke? I'm in my bed at home replying you. What? Why are you at my home? What do you mean? I'm on maternity leave. I mean, it's Sunday. Either way, it's my regular day off. Oh, you're going to have a baby and a burnt house. That's a lot of work. That's funny. Hey, what do you mean a fire? Was there a fire near where you live? Like I said, I'm relaxing on my bed at home. What? Your bed at home? You haven't even noticed the fire. Are you crazy? Huh? 
The house is on fire from the barbecue, and it's burning up like crazy. You'd better get out or you'll be burned. Get out now, you're crazy. Well, I checked and there's no fire in the yard and the house is not on fire. Not even the gas stove in the kitchen is on. What? I was in your yard a few minutes ago and having a barbecue with a huge fire going. It was windy and unfortunately the fire flew into a tree in the yard and it spread to the house. That's right, your Tesla in the garage. I bet it's burned to a crisp right now. I'm so sorry. Huh? What are you talking about? My car is not a Tesla. Huh? Your car is a black Tesla. I know. Yeah, until last year. We bought a new one last year before the inspection. Now it's Toyota. It's really comfortable. Huh? You replaced it? Not Tesla? Yeah, actually, after we bought it, we realized that the parking lot in the apartment was a little too small. That's also why we built the house. It was a big financial commitment, but it's something we had to think about someday, so we made up our mind. What? You have a brand new house and the car is Toyota? Yes, that's right. But my husband and I will be stuck in loan. Oh, the car is not a loan. Not a loan? What? You paid with cash? My husband is in finance, so he does a lot of the financial stuff for me. Thank God. And the mortgage isn't 30 years. We're both working, so it's shorter than that. I just want to pay the interest as soon as possible. Whatever. After all, a loan is a loan. You're going to be stuck in loan. The precious house you have loan is a burnt out. So I told you, I do what I said. I'm in my bed, in my room, in my precious new home, texting you. You've been saying fire, fire. Which house are you talking about? I'm telling you, it's your house. What are you saying? If you say you live in the elementary school district near a station, this is the only newly built house. What? We're not in the elementary school district. Didn't I tell you that? Huh? You said you found a nice place in our school district. Have you lost your mind already? That's not what I meant. I found a nice place in the junior high school district. What? Junior high school district? You know, my older son is going to junior high school from this year, and my youngest son is going to elementary school in a year. I thought it would be good timing. It was the right time for everything. I didn't have to worry about the small school district. He has to go to a different elementary school though, but he'll have a lot of friends from kindergarten, so it should be okay. What? You've got to be kidding me! If you said it's in the school district, you think it's an elementary school, wouldn't you? Don't confuse me, you're trying to trick me. Of course not, it's just your imagination. I didn't even think about elementary school or junior high school. I didn't have that in mind, I just said in the same school district. Normally we go to the same elementary school, even though we're in different grades, so you think it would be the same elementary school. I didn't think that far ahead. I guess I didn't have enough imagination. Sorry. You're not sorry. This is seriously someone else's house. What on earth am I going to do? Well, I don't know. I don't have any idea. Hey, I can see smoke near the station from my balcony. Is that it? Be more serious. It's your problem. Oh, I'm worried about you. I was wondering what's going to happen to you. Huh? Me? It's none of my business either. You broke into someone's house without permission and then set it on fire by having barbecue without permission. Oh, God. What? Watch out for your language. I didn't set it on fire. You didn't, but you don't deny that you broke into the house and had barbecue on your own. So what? Oh, now you admit it. Of course, you're Ashley. But you can't get away with this, can you? Huh? The fire insurance will pay for the fire anyway. The owner of this house doesn't have to pay anything. Therefore, I have nothing to pay for. It's not like I admit it or can't get away. I am following the rule. The fire insurance, maybe you're right. 
they'll pay for arson too, but they will still try to find out who did it, you know. I don't think they'll ever know. Why do you think so? Because no one saw how it went on fire. I mean, they probably didn't even notice that I was in the barbecuing in the first place. You can't threaten me. Surprising. Ashley, do you really work for a housing company? What? Normally, there should be security cameras, right? Huh? It's a brand new house, right? Perhaps. Your company doesn't use security cameras? We use them too. Front door, garage, and yard. What? I mean, in the first place, you went to that house alone, right? Yeah. Did you really have barbecue? Do people have barbecue alone? Huh? How did you bring all the tools and foods by yourself? You said the place burned down, but did all your tools burn up too? Did the fire really spread from the barbecue in the first place? There are so many questions that even I can think of. That's... Well, I'm sure you don't have that kind of guts to enjoy barbecue alone in the house of someone you don't like, so barbecue shouldn't be true. No, it's, it's true. I think it's just an arson, right? Proof. There is no proof. Unless there's proof, I can't be suspected. Ashley, you're so shallow. At the very least, this conversation should be the evidence. What? This conversation? You said it went on fire in front of you. It's obvious evidence. But I just said that and there's no absolute evidence who did it. Think about it. I just told you. What? Security cameras. If you check the camera records, I'm sure it'll all come out. Hey, the house burned to the ground. There's no way there's a record. The cameras should be all gone. There's no way anyone can see it. Oh, that fire was put out pretty fast. You didn't know? What? Oh, Ashley, you must have freaked out and ran away. When you texted me, you had already run far away from the house. Fire is scary, isn't it? What? I'm not scared. Well then, you should know that it was put out right away, right? Huh? You're lying. You didn't even see it. Don't tell like you know everything. Liar. Then if you hadn't run away, the fire alarm would have been going off this whole time. But you didn't hear it? Maybe it was going off inside the house. It was going off. The house was a new candlelight model home before it opened to everyone. So it has more alarms and security cameras than the existing house. That's why the people in the office immediately noticed the alarm and called for firefighting. No way! A model home? Oh no! That's why the fire didn't spread, according to my husband's friend. It's a good thing it didn't turn into a big fire. What? It was burning like crazy! It's not like it would be put out fast or anything! Hey, maybe when you snuck onto the property, it must have already noticed something was wrong. Security nowadays don't make a sound, and quietly hunts down suspicious people, you know? I mean, the model room is a lie, right? I thought it was someone's new house. There were no signs or anything? There weren't. There was no sign of anyone too. That's because it is a mother room before it is sold to everyone. Of course no one lives there. There were no signs or banners. Can't be helped. It's confusing. That's why I mistook it for your house. Mistake or not mistake, it's trespassing to enter someone else's property. That's a crime. Shut up. And what's that Tesla? That's another reason I mistook your house. They confused me. There are tons of people driving Tesla. Maybe it was the staff's car. I mean, that's your interpretation. Well, that's true, but... Maybe they left the car in the model home for a security purpose. If you find out that no one is home, someone like you might try to go into the house. How scary. Shut up. What are you going to do, Ashley? What? How are you going to take the responsibility? The house is covered by fire insurance anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'm sure the insurance will rebuild it, won't they? The house might be so, but what about you? Me? What happens to you? If the insurance is used and the house is rebuilt to its original condition, that's the end of it, isn't it? Huh? Of course not. What do you mean? As I said before, entering someone's property without permission is trespassing. 
and it's clearly arson. This is a crime. You may not have to pay for the house, but it doesn't make up for the crime you committed. A crime? You don't feel guilty? I feel sorry for you. Is this a crime? Of course it is. Trespassing and arson are all over the news. Haven't you seen it? No, 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 no! Can't be! I didn't mean it like that! This is not a crime! Even if you don't intend to do it, you won't be forgiven. I told you this is a crime. If Candlelight doesn't sue me, everything will be fine, right? Then get your husband to do something about it, please! Hey, if you had made the wrong move, you could have burned down our house. How can we want to help that kind of person? It's crazy. Maybe so, but we're friends. How can you say that? Plus, it's obvious arson. I really appreciate Candlelight Home for this house, and we hope to have a good relationship with them in the future. So I don't do anything to protect my fake friends or anything like that. It's none of my business. Please don't expect anything from me. Don't say that we're fake friends! I don't know why you have a grudge against me, but it's not normal to try to burn a down a house. It's not a normal adult thing to do. Please go fix your mind. Where at? At the jail. No! You can't take it back now. Not only the security cameras, but you probably have witnesses in the area. The police are smart, you know. I'll submit this conversation as evidence too. No way! You guys work in the same industry. Rumors will spread in no time. Ashley, will you be okay? What? I'm going to lose my job too? Well, whether the rumors spread or not, I'm sure you'll be fired immediately upon committing the crime. I seriously didn't mean it. One instance shows all. I'm sorry for your loss. No! No! Ashley went back to the house. Such a dumb idea. The police, who had been investigating the case, came to talk to her. Of course, talking was not enough. She was taken away by the police. Since this house cannot be sold because of the fire, Candlelight Home is also considering filing a claim for damages for obstruction of business. She was fired from her job because of the crime and demand a large sum of money for damages by some listed companies. The house that she had boasted of, a popular and expensive land, fully custom built house, is now on the market. I've learned that even if you try to one-up someone, nothing good will happen. Hey, Samantha, we don't have any soy sauce left. I wonder why since you often do a lot of strange mail order shopping. I'm busy receiving packages all the time, you know. If you have time to buy weird stuff, but can't you at least buy soy sauce at the market? You don't seem to understand the priority of things at all. Also, the socks were hanged upside down. The bathroom is also not cleaned well that I can still see some dark spots at the corner. I told you to clean the bathroom every day, didn't I? Are you trying to make our family sick by having us to use such a dirty bathroom? Last but not least, today's breakfast was disgusting. Please don't make Sean and Simon eat that. Thanks to you, I've been here all morning. I have to make breakfast for us. It's a waste of ingredients and time. Are you listening to me? Answer me. Or would you rather I call you instead? Hello, Matilda. Good morning. I've already started work. I can't look at all these messages you're sending me. I'll talk to you during my lunch break. I'm busy, so I'll get back to you later. See you soon. I won't be able to reply from now on. Oh, and thank you for picking up my packages. I have no time to go shopping right now. If it's too much trouble, I'll set up a box in front of the entrance next time. I don't care if you need to get to work or not. That's none of my business. As my son's wife, it's natural for you to listen to what your mother-in-law tells you with the highest priority at all times. You need to be aware of that. You don't make much money and you call that work? Don't you dare contradict me. I didn't mean to contradict you, but I need to do my job. Sorry, I can't reply to you anymore. Don't you dare to say that you can't do it. Anyway, that's not the point. 
starting tomorrow, I want you to think more about what you're going to put on the menu for breakfast. I don't want to eat the same thing day after day. I don't care if you say so, but you prefer a full American breakfast every morning. Pancake, grilled sausages, and so on. All of that really takes time to prepare. Do you remember when was the last time I talked about that to you? That was years ago, right? You keep repeating the same thing over and over like a broken radio. The breakfast you cooked was awful. If you eat something like that at the beginning of the day, you won't have any energy. You're such a useless wife. Did you say years ago? With all due respect, you told me about that last week. Last week? Are you sure? The meals have the same taste, so I feel as if I were eating those for years. That also means that you're cutting corners. Before you start backtalking me, take a look at yourself to see if you're at fault. You really are irritating. I'll talk to you about the food later. Just come home right now. What? Right now? Yes. You know I have hula dancing class today, right? My husband can't drive because of his back pain. You need to drive me there. I'm going to be late for my lesson if you don't do that quickly. You can't do that, Matilda. I'm at work, and I have an important meeting this afternoon. So please go to the hula class today by yourself. What? You can't listen to your husband's mother even though you're his wife? I have an important hula dance class this afternoon. You know what will happen if you disrupt my schedule, don't you? I'll come home right away if it's a life-threatening emergency. But hula dance is not an emergency. It's a 15-minute walk from our house to the class. Why don't you walk there for the sake of your own health? It would definitely be faster than waiting for me to come back. Fortunately, today is a beautiful sunny day. Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh wait! Listen to me, Samantha. Hey Matilda, seems that you've been making strange calls to my company, haven't you? Will you stop it? What are you talking about? It was you, right? The one who tried to spread rumors that I'm having an affair with my boss. You called my company without mentioning who you are. Oh my! Are you having an affair? I am not. I mean, my boss is a woman and she's married. That's impossible. You don't know that. Nowadays, we value diversity. You know. Just because your boss is a woman doesn't mean that she isn't having an affair. Diversity? That's not the point. Anyway, there is no such thing as infidelity. I heard you also said that my hobbies are disgusting and nerdy. That's true, isn't it? You have a weird colored wig in your room, a bunch of lacy, flirty clothes. You've been getting a lot of mail order packages lately, and it's all because of that disgusting hobby of yours. Am I right? I wish you'd stop. It's really annoying. You're right about me being a nerd. I'm not the only one who plays cosplay. It's a shared hobby between Simon and me. We met at a cosplay summit. It's a memory that we both cherish. Please don't make fun of it. I know our hobby might make some people feel uncomfortable. I'm not bothering you or anyone else. I mean, after all, you did call my company, didn't you? Please stop it immediately. What? You're my son's wife, but you don't listen to what I tell you. A wife like that is useless. Besides, I was just trying to tell the company who you really are. You don't have to tell the company about my private life. It's unrelated matter. I'm doing my job well in the company, and I have an important position there. What you've done is really a nuisance to the company, so please stop it at all costs. You're the one who's crazy, Matilda. Don't make a big deal out of this. Are you telling me that you think your company is more important than your family? What? How can you say that? You didn't marry Simon, my son. You married the company. You neglect your family and spend all your time at the company. Are you kidding me? There is no such thing as a marriage between a company and a human being. You're talking too much nonsense. I can't keep up with you. If you married my son, normally you'd obey your mother-in-law. But look at you! All you do is talk back to me. I'm sorry, but I can't have you as my son's wife any longer. Hold it right there, Matilda. It's a modern era now. And you still talk to me as if we're living in the year of 1800s or something closer to that. Did you just say that a wife should obey her mother-in-law? Modern people would be horrified to hear that. I thought you were joking, but it seems that you were serious. Oh my God! You're making fun of me after all this time. 
I really can't believe it. That's enough. If you can't follow what I, your mother-in-law, tell you to do, I will have you divorce my son. Do you understand me? I don't think so. I will not divorce Simon. As I said before, nowadays, wives don't obey their mother-in-laws. Are you still going to defy me? I won't forgive you even if you apologize. I'm serious. I brought it out. Thank you. Huh? Matilda, garbage day is Monday, remember? I'm not talking about trash. I think you misunderstood. What kind of things did you bring out then? Divorce papers. You are now divorced from my son. I filed it. That's why you need to get the hell out of my house right now. What? Divorce papers? That's too much of a joke. And it's not funny at all. I'm not joking. I don't like you because you're too cocky. That's why I filed the divorce papers to get rid of you. You can't just file for divorce because you don't like me. Besides, we talked it over at home yesterday. We decided on the rules from now on. Didn't you agree? No, I didn't. I'm not going to abide by rules you made up on your own. I'm not even going to follow them. If I need something, I need to tell you as soon as possible. Or, if I want to go somewhere, I should arrange that on your day off. It's all for your own convenience. Who do you think you are, forcing me to do whatever you want? That's the same line I'd like to say to you. I'm sure you've made a rule to tell me in advance if there's anything I need to know to prevent misunderstandings. Besides, you seem to think that I'm lying, but I'm telling you the truth about filing the divorce papers. Really? Yes, of course. Have I ever lied to you? Yes, you did that a couple times in the past, but I don't think the divorce papers filed on behalf of the related parties would be processed. Filing divorce paper without mutual consent should be invalid. I mean, neither Simon nor I wrote the divorce papers. How did you manage to file those? It's possible because I wrote your part on behalf of you. I asked a friend to write Simon's part. If the handwriting is the same, no one will notice. Thanks to my quick thinking, the officials didn't find out either. Goodness gracious, did you watch too much detective drama? You shouldn't tell such lies and jokes to Simon. He will believe it right away. I'm serious. I made sure I filed this promptly. Really? I'm sure. If you think I'm lying, go and ask the officials. You are no longer my son's wife. Now is not a good time. Anyway, I'll listen to what you have to say when I get back. See you later. Matilda, you're home now, aren't you? Please unlock the front door. And why are my things here? I have some important outfits. Could you please not put them directly on the ground? What if it starts to rain? Oh, you finally came home. You're too late. I left your stuff out of your room since you told me that you're coming home late, including those creepy costumes. Did you go to check with the officials? The office is already closed. In the meantime, please open the door. I don't want to. Only my family is allowed in this house. You're already divorced from my son. You're not a family member anymore, so don't come in the house. If you come in through the windows or the balcony, I will call the police. Is that what you want? If you don't like it, leave now. Enough. This is really not a joke. What do you think you're doing? I've told you so many times. It's because you don't listen to me, your mother-in-law. I told you the reason why, didn't I? Yes, I've heard that many times. You said that it's because you have a job, but this is my house. I created the rules, and what I say is all that matters. But you didn't listen to me at all. A wife like that doesn't deserve to be in my house. If I listened to everything you said, I wouldn't be able to go to work. I wish I could be a housewife, but we just don't have enough money. Without my income, we'd have a hard time making ends meet. That's your excuse. A wife is supposed to take care of the house. You don't need to bother about anything else. That golden era is over, Matilda. Unbelievable! You made fun of me again. You're not getting enough money with your work anyway. You're wasting your time working. You commute to work costs more than what your job pays in gasoline, and all you do is make excuses for work. You are a wife who is so absorbed in her work that she neglects her family. You're not a good wife and mother. In the meantime, please take the luggage that's left in front of the entrance. Otherwise. When Simon and my husband come home, they won't be able to enter the house, and your stuff will be in the way. If you don't take it with you, I'll make you regret. Come on, hurry up, go away. Wait a minute. I have Sean's school-related matters to take care of. If I lose my income, our family will be in danger. Shut up. I am busy making dinner. 
Don't contact me again, okay? Bye! Matilda, wait. Samantha, I heard about that. It seems that you were paid very well, weren't you? I'm sorry for treating you badly. I had no idea that you were paying for my hula dancing lessons. I'm really sorry for what I've done. What are you trying to say? You know what, Samantha? Come back home right now. I'll get your marriage certificate tomorrow so you can submit it again. Huh? I mean, you can come back to our house right now. Besides, you want to come back home, right? I forgive you so you can remarry Simon again. No, thank you. What did you say? I said I don't want to do that. Sean is waiting too. I know it's because he is still in elementary school. He must be worried if his mother doesn't come home until late at night. So, come home then. I'm not going back to your house. The three of us and you will be living separately from now on. What? Separately? Simon didn't say anything about that. Since it seems that you've forgotten that, let me tell you again. Simon doesn't say anything when he's angry. He just leaves without saying a word, just like his father. Simon knows what you told me, too, and what the company did to me. He said that he'll protect me. He also said that if I just put up with him a little more, we'd be able to live in peace. I told him not to make things worse. Sean is still in elementary school. Simon wanted us to live together with you so that I could go to work without worrying. My son was loved and cared for. I tried to help as much as I could, but you got carried away and went too far. You can't stop Simon no matter how much you say he's your son. Hey! While I was talking to you, they are gone. They were in the house just now. When I went upstairs, their stuff was almost gone. Why? I told you we're going to live together as a family. That's not true. Where is my son? Sean is my grandchild. Give him back. It's true that Sean is your grandson, but he's my son. Oh no! You didn't notice, did you, that we've been preparing to move out from a while ago? What? Moving out? Wait a minute, what do you mean? Simon told you about my income, didn't he? I'm in a good position at the company now, and I'll get a promotion at the next personal meeting. Promotion? Yes, that's right. The money you love so much that you can just change your mind quickly to get that. I'm going to get more money than I've ever got before. Well then, I think you should come home. A promotion means you'll be busier than ever, right? I can take care of Simon and Sean and do the housework too. Housework? You said housework is a wife's job until now. You've done nothing but gardening as a hobby. Besides, my new workplace will be changed to a place far away from your house. I won't be able to commute from that house. If I try to commute, it will cost me a lot of money for gasoline. So from now on, the three of us will do our best. Oh no, I didn't know about that. I didn't tell you because I didn't know what you would do to me. It's understandable that you don't know. This has been our plan from the beginning to keep you away from our family. You don't understand properly. You talk about our family of three as if you can afford it. You and my son are already divorced. Why do you think you can take them with you? I'm not forcing them to come with me. Both of them decided to live together with me by their own violation. Besides, a divorce decree without my and Simon's will is invalid, and you just filed those on your own. That makes you guilty of forgery for a sealed private document. I haven't reported it yet, but if I do, you'll be arrested. What? That's... And about Simon, when he found out about my relationship with you, he said he'll do his best to support me and he's been looking for a new job ever since. What? So I'm changing my job to a different job that offers me better benefits than I have now. We're going to buy a condo and live near my new company. I will get a promotion and Simon will get a salary increase so we can live much better than we do now. I can't believe that my son is leaving this house. Why? Doesn't he care about his mother? Simon was always fed up with your attitude towards me. He was very angry about that today. He couldn't believe that his mother was such an embarrassing person. And your lovely grandson, Sean. He said he doesn't like a grandmother who is mean to his mother. So we are all happy to be separated from you. Oh, and we've got your husband's permission too. What? My husband knew about that and didn't stop you? Yes, he said he and his wife would talk it over after we left. Oh, wait, let's talk it over first, okay? You ignored my phone calls when I said that. Please don't do that. What am I going to do now? Who's going to do the housework? Who will take me to and from hula dancing classes? And who's going to support our family's finances? 
the entertainment expenses and clothes. I don't know. Don't ask me. I mean, the money I was giving you for the rent was used for that kind of thing. I didn't know that. I think our family will be able to live a better life now that we are wasting less money. You are the one who should divorce your husband. Why don't you divorce him and get married to your precious money? Your husband was very angry. Even if you don't want to, he will divorce you for sure. Then, wait a sec, Samantha. Where are you now? You'll let me see Simon and Sean from now on, right? Samantha, are you still there? The next day, Matilda stormed into the company. Due to the previous nuisance phone calls, the company was on the warpath. She was turned away. We were very lucky to have a boss and co-workers who understood our situation. Now that Simon has told his father what happened, under his father's strict supervision, Matilda started working as a cleaner at the inn. She has been neglecting the housework that she used to leave to her daughter-in-law. My father-in-law said that his wife has been giving him a hard time. With the help of the company and my father-in-law, we have been able to live happily in our new place without letting my mother-in-law know where we are. I am relieved to be free from my mother-in-law's sarcasm and meanness, and my family's finances are much easier now that I can spend less money on useless things. Actually, I have accepted Simon's suggestion about my mother. So my mother, who used to live alone, has come to live with us. She is very excited to have a new family member, and my housework load has also been reduced. I am so grateful for the cooperation of my husband and children. I will be able to concentrate on my work from now on. Hello there, Isabel. I just heard about it. I know it's hard for you to say, so I'll just say it. Lisa, is that you? What did you text me at this hour? Seems that you're up to something. I'm curious anyway. By the way, are you having a day off from your part-time work today? Hey, stop calling me a part-timer. Only college students have part-time jobs, right? It's embarrassing. You have no delicacy at all, Isabel. Is that so? I don't know what the standards are for that kind of thing, so I can't really say. Anyway, are you off work today? Yes, but I mean the way you said that kind of pisses me off. Are you in a position to tell people? What about you, Isabel? Are you off work too today? It's a weekday. Oh, actually, I'm. No need to tell me. Even I can understand that much. You were fired from your job, right? Huh? Fired from the company? Me? Wait a minute, Lisa. What are you talking about? Are you going to play dumb with me at this point? When I called you on the phone today, I told you first, didn't I? I said I heard about what happened to you. Oh, you said something like that. That was about you getting fired from the company. Huh? Wait a minute. What's that supposed to mean? I wasn't fired from the company. Who told you that? I mean, I heard about it. I heard about that when your mother-in-law was talking on the phone with you. She told me now to go home and relax since you don't have a job anymore. I'm sorry if I eavesdropped, but I didn't do it on purpose. I just heard it accidentally. Well, that's exactly what my mother-in-law said to me on the phone. Anyway, did you just decide from that conversation that I was fired from my job? It's quite obvious, isn't it? Well, I knew the company would be in trouble if they employ an uneducated person like you. I guess you just have to give up and accept it. You deserve that anyway. Wait, what do you mean? Lisa, you're always looking down on me. Did I do something wrong to you? Is there something you don't like about me? What? You don't even notice that? You married my brother Stephen, even though you're not at all compatible with him. I've always felt sorry for him. Don't tell me you don't feel sorry for him. He deserves a better wife. Jeez, are you talking about that again? I'm tired of hearing that story over and over again. I've had enough. Do you think you have the right to say that to me? You married such a brilliant and perfect man who was my brother. You are not an eligible woman for him. To put it bluntly, both of you are disproportionate. Hey, Lisa, we promised we wouldn't talk about it anymore, didn't we? I told you that Stephen was mad too, didn't I? If you don't understand, I'll tell him. I just can't accept the fact, you know. My brother has always been a good student and an all-around athlete. He graduated from a prestigious university and got a job at a well-known company. Why would he marry such a useless woman like you? It's just unbelievable. Useless woman? That's the first time anyone's ever said that to me. 
Lisa, I think you should watch your language. Everyone thinks about it, but they just can't say it. Mom and Dad let you marry Stephen just because you're the one he chose. They may have let you get married without saying anything, but I'm not, because it's impossible for me to stay quiet. I was staying at the college's dormitory, so I wasn't at my parents' house at that time. That's my only regret. If only I had been there when my brother brought you to her house, I would have stopped him by any means. It's a stain on my life. You're so rude. I think you're not supposed to say that to me. If you say anything more selfish than that, then as you imagine, I'll get angry too. Why don't you just go ahead and get mad at me? I'm not afraid of you at all. Instead, I'll tell my brother. I'm going to tell him that you're bullying me. No kidding. Look, I know you care about your brother so much, but you're already 25 years old right now. Don't complain about little things like that. You're being childish. You should spend your time thinking about something else. You're wasting your life. I have no idea what you're talking about. Seriously, you're annoying me. Are you trying to say that I'm as childish as an elementary school girl? I didn't go that far. Stephen and I are already married. That's the fact that we can't change now. That's why I think it's best that we get along as sister-in-laws. At least that's what I'm hoping. Are you kidding me? I'll never get along with you. I don't want to get along with the person who took away my brother from me. Oh dear. If you don't want to do that, that's okay. But I want to keep things as amicable as possible. You are my husband's sister, and I want to take good care of you. Like the case with my company, just don't assume that I got fired, okay? You're desperately trying to make excuses. I'm sorry to say it, but well, a middle school graduate like you can't get a proper job, can you? I feel sorry for my brother that he got married to such a bad wife. Yeah, whatever. Can we end this conversation here? I have to go shopping now. Goodbye. A housewife who got fired from her job is so carefree. I want to be carefree too. Oh, I can't wait until you and my brother get divorced. I'll be waiting for that day to come. You, you must think about it. Hi, Lisa. Can I talk to you for a minute? Huh? What do you want? I'm busy, so just make it quick. I'm sorry for calling you out of the blue, but I thought it's important to tell you as soon as possible. To be honest, I'd rather you tell my brother so he can just let me know. I'm sorry. Stephen is busy with work every day. Yeah, that's right. You just got fired from your job and you're not busy. I forgot about that. I'll cut to the chase. It's about your wedding two months later. The first anniversary of my father's death is a day before your wedding. I'm planning to go back home that day, but. My parents' house is far away, so I might have to stay there. So on the day of your wedding, I might arrive quite late. Hmm. Huh, so what? Well, because I'm your sister-in-law, I thought I should let you know. I see, but I don't think it's any of my business. What? Why? It's your wedding day. Huh? Because you won't come to my wedding, right? Excuse me. What do you mean? I don't understand what you're saying. I'm the one who should be asking you that question anyway. Are you saying that you were going to join us at my wedding day? You've got to be kidding me! That's embarrassing. But I got the wedding invitation. You invited us jointly in my husband's name, right? Of course, that's just a pretext. I'll definitely invite my brother, but I didn't invite you, Isabel. Oh gosh, you mean you don't want me to come to your wedding? That's what I'm saying. You must tell Stephen that you won't come on my wedding day, okay? Because it's seriously unpleasant. I feel bad for my husband's relatives if he knows that his sister-in-law is a middle school graduate. My brother will also feel ashamed of himself, right? Wait a minute, Lisa. That's a little harsh, don't you think? Harsh? I don't think so. The bride is the star of the wedding. I'm the bride, and I'm saying that I don't want you to come. Are you trying to make me the heroine of the day upset? That's terrible. I didn't mean to. I just want to congratulate you on your wedding day. You don't need to do that. I mean, never mind about that. I didn't go to your wedding party either. What? I thought you didn't go to your wedding because you weren't feeling well on that day. Are you telling me that it was because you didn't want to go? That's what it was about. You didn't really believe that I was feeling unwell, did you? Of course, it was a lie. A lie? That's horrible. Stephen and I were really worried about you. Well, 
I told my mom and dad that I really wasn't feeling well. Telling them that I didn't want to go because I hate you, it's just too rude, right? So that's why I lied. I just told them that I wasn't feeling well enough to attend your wedding. The truth is, I just didn't want to go. My, oh my, that's too much to bear. So, you know what? You don't have to come to my wedding. I mean, I don't remember inviting a middle school graduate. If you insist on coming, I can hire you as a staff. Lisa. That's it. First anniversary of your father's death. Why don't you go alone? Don't bother my brother, okay? Well then. Lisa. Hey, what's going on? It's terrible that you're kicking me out. Oh, what's so terrible? I warned you not to come, didn't I? Even though I warned you beforehand, you ignored my advice and came here, didn't you? You got what you deserved. It's my sister-in-law's wedding. I wanted to congratulate you. Why are you being so mean to me? Then I'll just accept your feelings. Stephen gave me the wedding gift too. I'll accept it gratefully. You can send me the wedding gift to me personally too. Don't be silly. I'll tell Stephen about this. Go ahead. I'll tell him that you went to get some air because you didn't look well. You can say whatever you want. What's that? Hey, can you just divorce Stephen? Then there's no point in attending my wedding today, right? I think that's the best way to solve this problem. Don't you think that's a good idea? Enough is enough, Lisa. I'll put an end to all of this. What? What do you mean by that? You're really divorcing my brother? Oh, finally, my dreams come true. Huh? No way. Why would I divorce my beloved husband? I have no intention of doing that. What a useless woman. When you mention about ending something, that means divorce, right? I had high hopes for you, but I lost it right away. You're just a coward who doesn't have the courage to do what you're supposed to do. I'll end it properly. The contract with your husband's company. What? My husband? Wait a minute. What are you talking about? I don't understand. You have a husband you're proud of, right? He took over your father's company and became president a year ago, didn't he? Yes, he did. But still, Terry is such an amazing guy. He's a company's president at the age of 30. He's a seriously a genius. Genius, huh? I'm not so sure about that, but okay. So he doesn't have any problem with losing one of his clients, right? Huh? Losing clients? What are you talking about? I don't think you understand. It would be useless to explain it to someone who doesn't have the knowledge anyway. Anyway, I'm leaving for home. Wait, hey, I'm not done talking. I have to get ready soon. You've got to explain it properly now. I'll let you know when the wedding is over. You don't want me to attend, do you? Then I won't participate as you wish. What on earth do you think you're doing? You're so arrogant. You are not qualified to participate from the start. I've got a brilliant brother Stephen and my husband is a president of the company. I can't have a sister-in-law who is a middle school graduate. Get out of my face, stupid woman. I'll do that without you telling me, but don't regret it, okay? Huh? Are you crazy? I'm the happiest woman in this world, so there's no way I'm going to regret it. Please give my best wishes to your husband. If you try to have a relationship with my husband, I won't let you. You want to get close to him because he's the president of the company, don't you? Well, I can understand that a middle school graduate is only capable to think that way. But still, it sucks. I'll talk to my brother about this. Yeah, whatever. You can do anything you want, as you wish, Lisa. Well, have a nice wedding. Hey, it's Abel. We just finished the wedding. Really? Well, you did a great job, but why did you bother to text me? Don't say anything unnecessary when my brother comes home, okay? I told him that you went home because you weren't feeling well. Oh, I didn't know we were talking about that, but I'm sorry. I've already told Steven everything. Huh? What are you doing? I thought you left without saying anything afterwards. Maybe that's why. Well, I am sure it is. You've got to be kidding me. I wanted to take a picture of me and my brother together. We didn't even get a single picture. It's all your fault. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, but still, you should be polite to your sister-in-law or family. You're not my family. I really don't want a sister-in-law who graduated from middle school. I can't introduce you as family. My husband said he's ashamed of you too. 
Oh, I see. I'm sorry to hear that. Tell him the contract terminated. Huh? Contract? Is that what you were talking about before the ceremony? That's right. So, what is it? Did you tell your husband? Don't just say things that don't make sense. What contract? You were fired from your job, weren't you? Yes, that's right. I'll just need to let the company know what I want and they'll do what I want. I don't understand. I mean, your company has nothing to do with Terry, my husband. Don't say weird things. You really don't know anything, do you? I'm starting to feel sorry for you. About what kind of company I worked for, what kind of work I did. Well, how would you know? Anyway, I don't care. You're always making fun of me for being a middle school graduate. What do you mean? What the hell are you talking about? Well, to make it easy for you to understand, Lisa, I was in charge of dealing with various companies, and one of those companies was your husband's company. What? You were doing business with Terry's company? That's right, and we were the main contractor and your husband was a subcontractor. Seems that Terry has a big attitude, so big that it makes me so angry. That gentle Terry? That's a lie. Don't say strange things just because you weren't invited to the wedding. It's not a lie. He's terrible, you know. He's been verbally abusive to me several times. Well, I don't think he realizes that I'm your sister-in-law, but I think that's his true nature. Verbal abuse? I can't believe it. He's always been a gentleman. So let me get to the point. I'm ending the contract with your husband's company. What? Sounds like a bad business situation, huh? They've been asking for a lot less than the market price. There are many other companies that want to do business with us on good terms. I don't want a bad manager like Terry get involved. I'm going to end the contract now. Wait a minute. I don't understand. Is Terry's company in trouble? It seems like it. I heard a rumor that a lot of employees are quitting. Well, if the president is behaving like that, it's obvious. I don't think the employees will follow him either. I feel sorry for them. I don't know anything about that. I thought I was going to have the life of luxury. Because I'm a company's president's wife. I guess you shouldn't expect that to come. I'm sure Stephen and your parents will cut you off the family ties because of this incident. You may not have much of a glamorous life, you know. No kidding. Wait a minute. Why is a poorly educated person like you working for a company? Also, the fact that Terry's company is involved. That's a lie for sure. Frankly speaking, I have a college degree. What? You're a college graduate? Are you serious? Well, I graduated from middle school in North Carolina. I didn't go to high school, but... I knew it! How did you get the college degree then? You're lying about everything you've said, aren't you? This is why I hate middle school graduates. They're bad liars. After graduating from middle school, I couldn't go to high school because I couldn't afford it but I worked part-time and obtained my high school diploma. I went to college overseas and graduated while working part-time there. What? Overseas? That's right. And after that, a friend of mine started a company and hired me. I'm the main person in charge of the transactions. Well, I'm taking some time off anyway. Some time off? Is that why you weren't at work? I thought you were fired. I'm pregnant. I just got maternity leave. I'll be back to work after the baby is born. What? You didn't tell me about that! I tried to tell you, but you didn't even listen to me, Lisa. You just misunderstood me, didn't you? Your mother and father are very upset about this, and Steven says he's going to cut ties with you too. You deserve that anyway. Oh no! Wait, I'm sorry I ever said those horrible things! I'm so sorry, Isabella! So please, if Terry's company is in trouble, I'm in trouble too! It's none of my business. I'm not your family, am I? You told me that by yourself. I hope you'll be happy with your husband, who is the president of the company whom you love so dearly. See you. Have a good luxury life. Then, as recommended by my husband, I blocked Lisa's number. Lisa's parents have distanced themselves from her because of this incident. She was also told not to come back to her parents' house. Of course, Lisa's husband's company lost a lot of money when the contract with their company was terminated. Now they are in debt and somehow struggling to keep the business running. Serve them right. I'm in trouble! 
Hey, there's a guy at my house right now. A friend of yours. Oh, that's Jeffrey. He's my friend. He just called me, and we're going to have a drink after a long time. I'm still working and won't be home for another two hours, and Jeffrey's already on his way. I told him to go home first. Huh? If that's the case, you should have called me first. I can't let someone I don't know come to my house. Anyway, I told him to come back when you get back, so he went home. What the hell is that? That's so rude. I've texted you, telling you that my friend is coming before Jeffrey got to her house. I didn't receive that one. You should check it again. I'm sure that I sent it. I checked it already, but I really haven't received your message. You must be mistaken. You should double check. Gosh, seems that there was a transmission error when I sent that. See, you didn't send it. But when Jeffrey told you that he's a friend of mine, it's your job as my wife to shut up and entertain him. That's not very nice. You sent him home without even offering him a cup of tea. You're useless. I don't even know him. What if he's a criminal who pretended to be your friend? What if he does something nasty to me? How could anyone do that? I don't think Jeffrey would harm you, Rose. You are too self-conscious. Are you telling me that I'm worse than you, who forgot to let me know that your friend was coming? Think about it. Why didn't you just ask him to show you the conversation on his phone? That way you would have known we were friends, right? See, that's easy. I thought so too. I told him that too, but he said that he forgot his phone and wouldn't let me see it. If there was no way to check whether he was your friend or not, there was nothing I could do. Even after that, my husband kept complaining to me for a while. His friend also treated me as if I were a devil's wife. Jeffrey forgot that my husband made a mistake by not texting me before he came to our house. Both of them blamed me, as if I was the only one at fault. No matter how much I was blamed, I could not trust my husband's friend. I just could not trust him in any way. No matter if my husband has given his permission, I don't think it's a good idea to visit a newlyweds when the wife is all alone in the house. Also, what everyone shouldn't forget is. My husband said that Jeffrey is already on his way. Then why didn't Jeffrey have his cell phone with him? I wonder how he communicated with my husband. I felt some kind of unexplainable fear. That's why I decided to go back to my parents' house. Then I received a message from my husband, who was in a panic when he came home from work. Where are you now? What the hell do you think you're doing, leaving me like this? You have no reason to be upset. I was the one who texted you to let you know that my friend was coming. So why are you the one who's still mad at me all this time? Are you listening to me? I told you the other day I didn't get a message. You said there was a transmission error. Don't forget it just for your own convenience. That's why I called you, didn't I? I was trying to make sure that you're okay. You called me? I didn't get that. There you go. You're so full of it. I didn't hear it. I didn't get it. You just forget about it, didn't you? Then why were you trying to text me? You couldn't call me, so you decided to text me, didn't you? I did what I was supposed to do, Rose. You keep telling me about that, and you never listen to me. I thought that when we got married, you think a little more about me. I was wrong. I've had enough. You just keep one-sidedly bad mouthing me for selfish reasons. But you can't prove I didn't contact you, can you? Huh? There's no record or text or missed call from you, Kenny. Think about it. How can someone that can be easily erased like that be proof? You're too self-aware. Nobody's after you. That's not what this is about. Yeah, okay. Seems that、like、you're not going to apologize to me. Why should I apologize? You're the one who's sorry, right? I didn't do anything wrong. Then fine. I won't even talk to you. I'm thinking about a divorce. That's what I'm gonna do. Hey. You think you can talk to me so selfishly like that? What the hell do you want? What's your purpose? I beg your pardon. I don't trust you anymore. That's why I said I want a divorce. I don't understand why you're blaming me when I didn't do anything wrong. That's why I told you that my friend Jeffrey was going to visit our house. You see, this just keeps going back and forth, so I don't want to talk about it anymore. Even if you did text me, why would you call your friend when you're not home? Because. Jeffrey said that he didn't have a place to wait. A place to wait, huh? What a lame excuse! There are plenty of places to wait, such as restaurants and so on. Isn't that crazy? 
coming all the way to her house when I was the only one there. Don't say bad things about my friend. Okay, let's say I let your friend come inside. What do you want me and your friend to do? You can just prepare dinner or something, like what everyone does when they have a guest coming to the house. Just serve tea and snacks to him. Let him watch TV and make him feel like home. You want me to cook dinner for a stranger? Yeah, what's wrong with that? It's not that hard, is it? That's what a wife is supposed to do. Likewise, if my friend came over, would you serve her dinner? I would if she's your friend. I'll say serve her tea too. Then what if that friend of mine is actually a criminal who just lied to you? You don't have to worry about that. You've never had a friend visiting you in the first place. Anyway, do you really have a friend? That means when the person says that she's your friend, I'll know right away that she's trying to deceive me. Kenny, do you realize that you're contradicting yourself? Huh? I'm just stating about the common sense. You're just being too logical and difficult. Also, you're trying so hard to justify yourself. No, I think I'm just talking plain and simple. That's your common sense. I'm different from you and I'm not that complicated. Then divorce me because I can't be with someone who doesn't value my common sense. Huh? Why are you talking like that? That's so extreme. If that's the way you're talking right now, then yes. But divorce over something like this is overreacting, right? You should think twice. I thought so too. We'd get into trouble over something as trivial as this, you know? I can't continue our marriage to someone I can't have a proper conversation with. I'll report this to your parents too. You think you can do such a selfish thing? I'll forgive you now, so don't make any more trouble and come back. Forgive me? I'm not going back to her house. You have until tomorrow to decide whether you're going to apologize or divorce me. If you don't apologize, let's have a divorce. That's right. I just remembered. Jeffrey was at our wedding. What? What are you talking about out of the blue? We knew each other. He was at our wedding, so he knew you too. That's why he wasn't a stranger. What do you think you're talking about, Kenny? Do you know how many friends you invited to her wedding? There were a lot of people and most of them were your colleagues. How could I remember the face of someone I met only once at the wedding? Don't be so heartless. Jeffrey was there to celebrate our marriage. Do you remember the faces of even one of my friends? Would you recognize them if you saw them on the street? What's wrong? Did you just ignore me because you don't remember any of my friends? Are you just going to forget every single thing that you think is inconvenient for you? Jeffrey is really my friend. Even if I did remember him, it doesn't mean that Jeffrey is my friend, okay? We have never talked to each other. I don't want to spend a few hours alone with a stranger. I don't care even if you ask me to do it for your sake. He's a friend of mine. Why can't you just be nice to him for my sake? If you can't even do that, that's very selfish of you. It's okay that this time it was a friend, but what if the person was my boss? That could affect my promotion. Can you take responsibility if I don't get promoted for the rest of my life because of you? Isn't that the worst thing you could do as a wife? Okay, let's say that the person was a criminal. If I got killed because I invited him in, can you take the responsibility for that? Kenny didn't reply to me. Well, I guess he can't answer that because he has never thought about that possibility. Seems like the divorce is not moving forward. Maybe I should ask for a lawyer. The next day, I looked at my cell phone during my part-time job lunch break. I got a long, long message from Kenny. I didn't even want to read it. Although the content was in the form of an apology, the message was full of excuses and condescending. No matter how hard I tried, I could not forgive him. One thing that bothered me was that his friend Jeffrey said he wanted to apologize to me. I was thinking about why Jeffrey wants to go through the trouble of meeting me. I felt that something was not right. I wanted to set up a meeting with an attorney to discuss the divorce matter. I contacted my husband but did not receive a response. Then, on the weekend, my husband suddenly came to my parents' house with Jeffrey. When they came, my younger brother and his wife Megan were there. My parents were out. So the five of us, my husband, Jeffrey, my younger brother and his wife, decided to have a discussion. There was no apology from my husband and Jeffrey. The discussion remained at a standstill. It didn't make any sense. I wondered what they came here for. In the end, I decided to hire an attorney. I asked my husband and Jeffrey to leave that day. Later that day, I was told an unbelievable fact by a certain person. 
are you waiting for? All you have to do is get a divorce. You're the one who made things so complicated. What's wrong with you all of a sudden? This is between me and Kenny. It's none of your business, Megan. Of course, it's also my business. I want to marry Kenny as soon as possible. Seriously, what are you talking about? You are my brother's wife. I found out when I visited your house last time. I realized that I was married into this family to meet Kenny. I felt like it was my destiny to be together with him. You're also insensitive, aren't you? Kenny is very fond of me, so he's mine already. He said he'd remarry me as soon as he divorces you. Just go ahead and tell Kenny is not at fault. Well, he doesn't love you anyway. Then you can get a divorce with a clear mind, right? Kenny may feel refreshed, but I don't. If he doesn't love me, then why is he arguing about the divorce? He can just do it straight away if he wants to. Kenny is a smart guy. If he admits that he's at fault, he'll have to pay alimony, right? He said he doesn't want that to happen. That's not smart. That's just being petty. So since he doesn't want to pay for alimony, he's just going to keep on complaining. I'm appalled. What about Jeffrey then? It's just not right that he keeps popping up multiple times. He has nothing to do with this, so why is he acting like he's a part of this matter? I'll tell you what I think. Jeffrey loves you. Huh? He fell in love with you when he saw you at the wedding, but he gave up on you because you're his friend's wife. But when he and Kenny were having a drink together, Kenny told him that he wanted to divorce you. When he heard that, Jeffrey's love for you had got stronger than before. I'm happy for you. So you and my husband took advantage of that. Well, that's what it comes down to, but it doesn't matter, does it? The truth is that the day Jeffrey went to your house, I got proof of the affair and tried to use it for the divorce. But Jeffrey chickened out at the last minute. Since you turned him away, the whole plan got screwed up. You're just playing hard to get. Do you even know what you're talking about? You're saying that you're trying to take advantage of your own friend. That's very inhuman. It's okay because nothing happened, right? It would have been fun if something had happened. That's not the point. Do you even care about other people's life? If that had happened, Jeffrey would have been arrested by the police. Kenny told Jeffrey not to worry because he would pay for the settlement. Jeffrey said he had no intention of doing any harm to you. He didn't even know he was being used, and he was so eager to go and see you. Poor Jeffrey. He thought that he could be you together with you. He's just too sweet, which really makes me want to laugh out loud. You're such a jerk. You can say what you want. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all. At first, I was going to charge you with adultery. But that's too much trouble. Just divorce Kenny as soon as possible. I don't want to wait any longer. You don't have to pay me any more money, so just get out of my life. When Megan contacted me, a chill ran down my spine. I felt as if I were frozen by her curse. It was all planned. I have no trust in my husband anymore. He is more of a stranger to me now. I'm afraid to stay in the marriage any longer and I don't want him to come up with another nasty plan. I decided to consult an attorney immediately. I was confused with a mix of anger and disappointment. Once I realized that it was a setup, I completely switched myself to an anger mode. I swear that I will not be defeated. Let the war begin from here on. What do you think you're doing, Rose? It's so obvious, isn't it? What you tried to do to me. I'll never forgive you. You have to take responsibility as an adult. I didn't do anything wrong. You just didn't do anything directly to me. You knew about the plan, so it's the same thing. This whole thing has hurt me a lot. I've been scared. That's why I'll make you pay for the alimony. But your brother is going to ask for alimony too because he's divorcing me. I can't pay that much. Don't you dare say that to me. You're still married and you're responsible for hurting my brother's feelings. I also gave him the screenshot of the messages I had with you. You'd better admit it soon, Megan. You don't like waiting, do you? You're the worst thing ever. That's why you're dumped by Kenny. I know, I'm not stupid, so maybe I was too smart for Kenny. But to be honest, I'm grateful to you for giving me the opportunity to divorce my husband like that. Thank you, Megan. 
You and Kenny are a perfect match. I know it's going to be hard to pay for the alimony from now on, but you and Kenny are capable to do that together. Wait a minute! I'm not finished talking with you! You must drop your lawsuit against me! The alimony from Kenny is enough! You don't have to take it from me too! Hey! Don't ignore me! Say something! Rose! Please! That terrible plan was exposed. Kenny and I, Megan and my brother were able to divorce rather easily. My brother and I sued Kenny, Megan, and Jeffrey for alimony. The three of them kept blaming each other. They showed no signs of remorse for what they had done. They are really shabby people. The attorney thought they were malicious and demanded a substantial amount of money for compensation. If they did not comply, they would go to court and content certified letter will be sent to each company they are working for. With this, Kenny and Jeffrey gave up easily and paid the fee. Megan, who was a housewife, had no way to pay the fee, so she was complaining but her parents shut her up. Kenny was blamed so badly by my parents, his younger brother, and his own parents, and when he came to my parents' house to write the divorce papers, I was surprised to see that he was like a zombie. But both my parents and my brother say they have no intention of forgiving Kenny. Of course, neither do I. It seems that Megan told Kenny to marry her, but Kenny's parents were against that. It seems that Kenny, who's fed up with all the lecturing from his parents, did not defend Megan and turned her away, saying that he would not marry her. I have returned to my parents' house and am regaining a peaceful life. After what happened, my brother and I were depressed for a while. But both of us were glad that we realized the true nature of Kenny and Megan at an early stage before we had kids. Hello, Sean. How are you doing? It's your mother. You work from home, so you're all alone during the day today, right? Are you feeling well? Are you eating well? Are you sleeping well? Is your work going well? Is Alicia taking good care of you? What the hell? Please stop with texting me as if you couldn't live without me, mom. I was working hard like usual, but now I've lost my concentration. Well, you shouldn't talk to me like that. I'm just worried about you. If I could, I'd like to take care of you by myself. Since I can't go over there, Alicia is the only person who can do that now. I've told you many times to stop treating me like a little boy. I'm already 34 years old. I'm a grown man. Cut it off, okay? Well, don't be angry like that. I'm sad to hear that. I just don't like the way you treat me. Why can't you treat me like a grown-up man? But you know what? For me, you are still my dearly beloved little boy. You know, people say that children are always children to their parents. Even if you have grown up to be an adult, you will always be my adorable son. I think you are misunderstanding the fundamental meaning of the word. By the way, how's your wife? I tried to call her after 1 p.m., but she hasn't answered yet. Well, it's because Alicia is not allowed to use cell phone at work. She leaves her phone in the locker room when she's at work, so she probably doesn't even look at it during her lunch break. If she does respond, it will probably be after work. Oh, is it going to be that late? Then, doesn't that mean she can't take care of you? Oh my God, I knew my fears were right on target. I had a feeling you were in danger, so I texted you and this is what I got. It's called a mother's instinct. Huh? What on earth did you say to Alicia? I asked if she came home during the lunch break. Why? She has to make lunch for you, right? I can at least make my own lunch. So she didn't come home after all? Of course she didn't. In the first place, the company she works for is quite far from here. She can't come home and go back to her workplace in just one hour. What? She works at a company that's far away? I'm so surprised. Why would you be so surprised? It's just that it's difficult to go back and forth during lunch break, but it's a distance that everyone can commute normally. No, it's not. If she can't take care of you during the lunch break, it's far enough. I know some people who commute two hours each way. If it's someone other than your wife, I'm sure that I won't mind. But Alicia is your wife. 
She exists to take care of you, doesn't she? But she can't even check her cell phone at her earliest convenience to cook lunch for you. What on earth is she doing? I want her to quit working as soon as possible. Get her to work closer to home. Well, at the very least, she should be able to walk or ride her bicycle for three minutes. She needs to cook, clean up, and make your after-dinner coffee. Also, she must clean your room. No, there's no way I can let her do that. This is a big residential area. There's no place to work within a three-minute walk or bicycle ride. Besides, Alicia loves her job. I think it's fine the way it is. Anyway, I didn't marry her just because I want her to take care of me. Seriously? I'm surprised to hear that you didn't realize that. I sometimes take care of Alicia too. I think it's fine for us to have it both ways as a married couple. Well, you know what? You've only been married for three months and she's been putting you through such a hardship. I always thought she was a kind girl, but looks like I was wrong. Oh, my poor boy, I feel sorry for you. What do you mean by that? Oh, if it wasn't such a distance of four hours one way, I would go there every day to take care of you. Please don't ever do that. Actually, I've been thinking about it for a while. Let's put it into action. What are you talking about? I'll tell you when I do it. Don't worry. I'm on your side no matter what. I just need a little time to prepare, but just wait and see. I'm sure that you will be happy to see me. I have a very bad feeling about this. Alicia, are you available to talk now? I'm sure you've received a message from my mom who thinks that I'm some sort of three-year-old boy. You can just ignore it as usual. Hello, Sean. I just finished work. I'm waiting for the train at the station. Did your mother text you again like crazy? Yeah, she did. I'm so distressed. I can't even laugh about it. Oh, I'm sorry for you, honey. You know what? Maybe she's just lonely living alone because my father divorced her some years ago. But I think the reason my father divorced her in the first place is because his wife is too attached to her son and it's too gross for him to bear. It's scary that my mom still doesn't get it even after two years or so. I'm really close to the end of my rope. It's really tiring to communicate with my mom. You've done a great job dealing with your mom, Sean. It's a relief that your father understands how you feel. You're right. I was so busy after my parents filed the divorce. The good thing was, I was able to get out of my parents' house. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have met you, sweetheart. If I decided to stay with my mother at that house, gosh, I shudder to even imagine about that. It would be easier if I could just ignore it. Oh, I'm dying to block my mother. If you do that, she'll definitely come barging in here. I'm seriously getting dizzy just to think about that. Sorry. I shouldn't have given her our home address, even though it's not so easy for her to get here. I really regret what I've done. But that was the condition for you to come out of your parents' house, wasn't it? You had no choice. Don't blame yourself, Sean. I guess you're right. I was desperate at the time, thinking it was my last chance, so I obeyed that without thinking too deeply. In the end, I'm getting frustrated every time I get a call from her. I'm always on edge, wondering when she's going to barge in. It's better than when I was at home, but it's still a stressful life. She's been troubling you that you can't even concentrate on your work, hasn't she? Last week, she didn't even care that it was the deadline to submit your work. That's right. That's what bothers me the most. Even though she's my mother, she's a real pain in the ass. She says she's doing it for my sake, but all she does is just get in my way. If I don't do something about it soon, my mental health will be in danger. I'm so sorry. Alicia, you are the only thing that keeps me going. Then I have good news for you. Oh, what is it? It's about what I've been asking my real estate agent friend. I got a call from him that he found a place that fits our needs. Really? It's soundproof, so it will be perfect for your long-cherished dream of having a room dedicated for your work. Oh, I'm honestly happy to hear that. I heard that we can go check the property tomorrow, right? Let's go there tomorrow. If we both like it, we can make a decision right away, can't we? We have to decide whether to renew or terminate our contract with the current apartment anyway. I guess so. I'm sure my friend will be happy to hear from you. I'll call him as soon as I can. Thanks for your time. I'm so excited. Me too. 
As soon as we decide, we'll start preparing for the move. You don't have to worry about your mother anymore. Got it. I'm suddenly feeling more energetic now that I have a glimmer of hope. It's going to be busy, but we'll do our best. Yeah, good luck to us. Sean, my boy, it's your mother here. I'll be arriving there soon. I'm so excited to see you, darling. Oh, if you're busy, you don't have to reply. I know that you're probably at work. We can be together all the time from now on, right? Sean, are you home? The door was unlocked. Did you forget to lock it and went out? It was supposed to be a surprise, but I got a little carried away. I mean, your wife isn't here either. It's Sunday, so I thought you both would be here. Maybe the two of you are out somewhere? I'll take care of this. Don't worry about me. You can enjoy your holiday. What? Mom? Oh, Sean, at last. Right now, I just got my friend to drive my car and brought in my luggage. Your luggage? Brought them in? Sorry, I don't think I understand you, Mom. By the way, your wife is not good at cleaning. Your room is not very tidy. She needs to learn how to clean properly. Now that I'm here, I have to teach her well. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, no. There's only beer and snacks in the fridge. And as far as I can remember, you don't drink alcoholic beverages. Then this must be Alicia's. I can see how much she's been neglecting you. This is quite a problem. Poor boy. You are being bullied by your wife, who can't even clean your room, let alone take care of you. But it's okay. From now on, your mother will protect you. Uh, so what? What are you talking about? By the way, this room was a one-bedroom apartment. I've reduced my luggage as much as possible, but it looks a little short on space. It's too small for the three of us. But if we move to a bigger place as soon as possible, it will be fine. What? One bedroom? No way! You came to our old house? You never said anything about that. It's a little surprise. What do you think? Aren't you happy with that? I thought you would be happy, so I secretly prepared for that. From now on, you and me will live together forever. I don't think Alicia can take care of you perfectly, and that's why you need your mother. That is the best solution. Are you kidding me? I'll prepare dinner, so come home early. I'll make your favorite omelet tonight. Hey, Mom. What is it? I think you're trespassing. I won't say anything bad about it, but you should leave that house right now. What? Trespassing? You're so funny. You're so good at jokes. Your favorite mother just came to her adorable son's house. I came to the address you gave me. So this should be where you live. That's not our house anymore. We moved out. What? Moved out? Yeah, we moved out. This can't be true. Sean, darling. Oh, you're divorced from Alicia, huh? That's great. A wife who can't even take care of you doesn't deserve you. I didn't. I'm too dumbfounded to say anything else. Me and Alicia, we found out that our one-bedroom apartment was too small for us, so we moved to a bigger room. Really? Then this room is... Alicia just checked with the landlord. She said that there are already new tenants in the room. What? The landlord contacted him and he said he forgot to lock the house and went out. Mom, you are breaking in since it's now a stranger's house. Oh my God! What the hell are you doing? I don't even want you to show up unannounced. You're planning to move in with me without consulting me? Bringing in stuff without the owner's knowledge? Even if you take into account the fact that the current resident forgot to lock the door? I think it's too insane. You know, I just wanted to see your happy face. I planned this as a surprise. I didn't expect you to be moving out, so I failed. But your mother's feelings made you happy, right, Sean? I'm not happy at all. It's a big inconvenience. Oh no, please don't say that. The landlord is going to the room now. Besides, the owner of the room also will be coming home in a hurry. So get your stuff out of here. Apologize to those people. If you don't hurry, it will be a police matter. Police matter? Why? What's the matter with you? Because you're trespassing someone else's house. 
Um, where are you and Alicia now? Tell me your new home address. I'm coming over there now. Don't come. I'll never tell you where we live. Go back to your old house. That house is already on the market. I beg your pardon? So let's move in together. I can't. But if it's bigger, then I can move in with you. You picked out a bigger house for me to live with you, didn't you? Alicia is pregnant. Are you joking? We were moving to make a new start, the three of us, parents and the unborn child. Please don't get in my way. Pregnant? Whose baby is it? It's my child, of course. Oh, no. I can't believe you would do such a thing. Tell your mother the truth, okay? Huh? You are being threatened by Alicia to tell her that the unborn child is yours, aren't you? Oh, poor boy. Your mother will protect you no matter what, so don't worry. Alicia didn't have an affair. I want to have a child with Alicia. That's why she's now pregnant with my child. No, things aren't supposed to be like that. You are not allowed to do that. My little boy would never do such a thing. You know how your mother feels, don't you? I've had enough, Mom. What do you mean, Sean? You're sick of living with Alicia, aren't you? I understand perfectly. So let's live with your mother then. I don't want someone like you to be my mother anymore. Sean, what's wrong? What are you saying? I'm going to cut ties with you. Don't contact me anymore. Sean, please don't be silly. Sean, are you there? Tell me the new address where you're moving to. I left the rest to the landlord to deal with. I was prepared that the police action might be unavoidable. I'm not involved in the trouble since I wasn't there, so my mother just apologized and left. Soon after that, she asked my uncle, my mother's brother, for help. My uncle asked me about what happened between me and my mother, so I showed him the talk history. He was both appalled and nauseated, but eventually understood my feelings toward my mother. In the end, my mother starts to live at my uncle's house. We agreed that she would eventually be admitted to a nursing home. My mother, who finally understood that I hated her, was in despair. She spends her days in a corner of a room, staring at pictures of me. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time.